Hello folks, today we're going to be looking at two entry point refracting telescopes, a Skywatcher Mercury 707 and a Celestron Astromaster LT70. These are both 70mm refractors with 700mm focal length and that equates to an f10 focal ratio. They're both on lightweight out azimuth mounts. Both cost exactly the same, £119 which is it's going to be similar in euros and dollars. And lenses are actually quite expensive to grind and polish compared to mirrors. So this does tend to give a bit of a deficit in the old mount and tripod department, which can make them a bit wobbly. This is why I recommend the Dobsonian more, but some people just don't want a Dobsonian and uh, they like the look of a classic refractor. They've been around for hundreds of years. It's what a lot of children associate with what a telescope looks like and it the visual aspect of looking at a telescope is somewhat important considering the amount of time it's cloudy. You've got to live with it in your living space a lot of the time. So if that's important to you and I can't persuade you to buy a tabletop Dobsonian, which is best to get out of the Skywatch 707 or the Celestron Astromaster LT70. Now, the first thing to consider when you're setting up a telescope is once you put the, the telescope on the tripod, attach the diagonal, the eyepiece and the finder, you've got to align the finders with the main optical tube because as the name suggests, the finder helps you find objects. So that's the, the first stumbling block for anyone starting out is how easy it is to align this with this. Now, the way we do that is usually during the daytime by pointing the main telescope towards a TV aerial, making sure it's nowhere near the, the sun. Obviously, you don't want to mess about with the sun looking for a telescope. That's going to be bad news for your eyesight. But what you do is point the main telescope at the TV aerial, get it centered, and then you make adjustments to the finder scope until it lines up with the same image. In the case of the Skywatcher, we've got an optical finder scope. It's a 24 by six times, so it magnifies six times. And with the Celestron, we've got a red dot finder that just projects a red dot onto the sky. It doesn't magnify at all. Now with the Skywatcher, the optical finder scope, there'll be crosshairs in there as well to help you line things up. I did note that the finder scope here is stopped down. There's a plastic ring in, uh, behind the lens and they do that when the optics are particularly poor. I'm not a big fan of them generally, but we'll see how this one does. So the first test out of a number of tests will be to see how easy it is to set these up and what the views are like through them. So that's what I'll do now. Okay, I've switched to the GoPro to give you more of a first person feel for how to set these up. So first of all, we've got the Skywatcher Mercury 707 and we're going to focus on that TV aerial over there. It's probably about 60, 70 meters away. There's birds sitting on top of it. Uh, so I've aligned, I've already aligned the main telescope, so if you look down there you should be able to see a view of a bird sitting on the TV aerial there. So now I just need to align this finder scope. There's three adjustment screws to do that. That pivot, it kind of narrows down in this bracket and then pivoting the screws alters the tilt and angle of that until it's aligned with the main tube and you can focus by turning this bit here. So what I'll, what I'll do is I'll get on with that now and tell you how easy or hard that is. Okay, uh, I think that probably took two, three minutes because it was a little bit fiddly to be honest. It wasn't the easiest thing to do because the moving these screws was a bit kind of random I found um, but I got there in a couple of minutes it was a little bit tedious but you know you only have to do it every so often so that's hopefully I can show you the view through there now you can see the TV aerial can you see that there you go now it's got tons of chromatic aberration blue color fringing and that's probably why they've uh, stopped it down because it would be worse if they hadn't put that stop down ring in there but it's it's done its job basically it's, it's a bit fiddly but we'll see how it compares to the celestron next before i forget before i go on to the celestron i, I was actually quite i thought i'd mention this i was quite surprised how sturdy the view was if i 
look through the main telescope and then tap tap it the uh, I'm tapping the diagonal now quite hard it settles quite quickly the view it's a little bit more stable than I gave it credit for to be honest not as bad as I thought but we'll see how the Celestron is in terms of aligning the finder with the main telescope tube next okay so now on to the Celestron Astro, Astro Master LT70 and it's got this pan handle kind of photographic tripod where you twist it and you can move it around like a photographic tripod and I'm using the low power 20 mil Celestron eyepiece there this I've lined up the main telescope that's what the TV aerial looks like through the GoPro shining down the eyepiece let's do our little wobble test now actually while we're at it let me just make sure stuff's tightened up yep Okay. It gone? So let's do the wobble test like we did with the Sky Watcher. We can line it up. It's difficult this. It's actually a bit more wobbly than the yoke mount of the Sky Watcher. So you're taking a few seconds to settle down. That's fine. So that's yeah, just a few few seconds to settle down. Which is, yeah, so first impressions, quick daylight tests are both acceptable in terms of the wobble test, how long it takes to settle for the wobbles, how long it takes for the wobbles to settle after knocking the telescope or adjusting the focuser or anything like that. So next we need to align this red dot finder with the TV aerial, so I'll let you know how easy that was in a moment. Okay, I literally, I was gone 20 seconds, it is now aligned, so yeah, probably, probably five times quicker to align that one. I don't know if you can see the red dot though, whether it shows up, probably won't show up as well on a GoPro. I don't know, I'll get close enough. But yeah, that was quicker to set up. Um, yeah, but they both do the job and it's not something you've got to set up every time you use the telescope. I think that was quite a positive first test. Obviously it was just a, a test of lining the finder scope, how well easy that was, and a bit of a tap test to see how both these mounts handle the wobbles. And um, both did better than I thought, but I was especially surprised by the Skywatcher because I've not got fond memories of the oak mounts. Uh, it's the same type of mount that I had on my first telescope, H7 for Christmas, and I didn't, I persevered, but didn't get on with it. My conclusion thus far is that things have moved on since the 80s and you get more for your money now because this this was more sturdy, definitely more sturdy than what I had. So I underestimated that. The finder scope was a pain to align and the optics are very poor. The red dot finder was easy, to, relatively easy to align and it's a red dot so you can't really make judgment on the optics. It's just a red dot pointing at where the telescope's pointing. Um, so finder scope wise, red dot wise, the Celestron wins. Actually, surprising for me, the wobble test, at least initially, I'll be doing more tests, but initial wobble test, the Skywatcher actually did a little bit better. So it's one all really for both of these, but I'll be testing them outside at night under the stars, see what I think, see how easy it is to find objects like the moon and stars and hopefully Jupiter if I can see it and hopefully can rope my kids in uh, to see what they think about it too. A big massive thank you to my channel members and Patreons. It means a lot that you guys support me. If anyone else wants to check that out, it'll be in the description. And if you like this content and want to see more, please hit that notification bell, subscribe and hit the like button. Okay, until next time, clear skies and astro la vista. <laughs>